Well, we're not going to get very far in a series about CUCM without talking about what it is. When you hear CUCM, Cisco Unified Communication Manager, I want you to think center. It is the core of the apple. It is the engine of the car. It is the nucleus of the atom. It's the flux capacitor, whatever, whatever works for you. It is the center of Cisco's unified communication strategy. Now, CUCM was originally called Call Manager, and Cisco did not create it. They bought it. They actually gobbled up an entire company called Celsius, who created Call Manager and the original IP phones that Cisco started using. If you were to look at the CUCM, it is a server, one or more servers that you have inside of your uh, structure, and that's the one that starts controlling the IP phone. So when you start plugging your IP phones in, I mean, let's say this guy has extension 10 and extension 11, somebody had to say those phones had that extension. I mean, that, that's got to be stored somewhere. And, and when this phone goes off hook, you get a dial tone and it starts dialing here. Beep, beep, you know, something is processing those calls. So essentially all of that is going to the CUCM. CUCM is figuring out, looking at its database and saying, okay, it looks like this person has dialed extension 11. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, 11. Uh, that rings this Mac address. Let me go ahead and uh, make that phone ring. So we have the signaling, the device control. You know, if somebody picks up and dials nine. You know, something has to say, oh, that's an outside line. Oh, are you allowed to make an outside call? Are you allowed to dial that long distance number? I mean, all of that goes into the CUCM. Now, CUCM also offers, I'll say natively in itself, directory services. That allows you to create user accounts. Now, what do you need those for? Well, user accounts allow users to be associated with devices so they can log into a web page and control their device. Uh, primarily things like call forwarding, how does the voicemail light work, you know, call, you know, when, when, how many times does the phone ring before it goes to voicemail? I mean, some of the basic functions like that uh, can be controlled by the users. That's known as directory services. Now, those user accounts can be used for a lot more as well, uh, but that's the core of it. You can also start linking Call Manager to outside applications. So CUCM can go link to, for instance, an Active Directory uh, domain controller where all the user accounts are created. So you know, directory service can bleed into this because you might have an administrator that says, well, I don't want to create 500 new user accounts because I've already got them. They're sitting inside of Active Directory. That's a sad user. And Call Manager can go ahead and link to Active Directory and just say, great, well, let me import or use those user accounts so I don't have to create a second user database. You have things like uh, Cisco Unity, which provides voicemail services. So call manager can link over there to Unity. You can get into uh, Cisco IPCC, uh, which is the IP contact center, provides, uh, you know, uh, 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 what's, what am I looking for? The, the call center application to where somebody can call in and say, okay, I want to rotate among this group of uh, call technicians and the first one available takes the call they hear hold music you get call tracking all that kind of stuff uh, call manager can link to uh, for instance voice gateways so something has to tie into uh, the t1 line that goes out to the public switch telephone network uh, and that might be a voice gateway just essentially a cisco router so when somebody dials nine for an outside line the call ends up routing that way now, CUCM has gone through many versions. When Cisco began with this product, all the initial versions were running on a Windows operating system. It, believe it or not, originally it started on Windows NT, then went to Windows 2000, and then graduated to Windows 2003. Amazing! That was the 4.x. Now, I, I mention that because you'll still see it running out there to this day, because how often do people just completely change the phone system? Not that often. So, once they went with version 5.x and beyond, 6.x, 7.x, 8.x, 9.x. It's gone with a Red Hat based Linux appliance. But you don't need to even care that it runs on Red Hat because it all installs just based on an image. Uh, you never see the Red Hat operating system. That's all hidden behind the scenes. So everything, once we install it, I'll, I'll say 90% of the items are all graphic based or GUI uh, controlled. The 10% may end up being a, kind of a Cisco proprietary command line interface that you use to deal with the call manager. When I first stepped into the Cisco Voice over IP world, Call Manager, because it wasn't even called CUCM, could be installed on anything. You could install it on a laptop and run Call Manager. And then in the 3.x release, Cisco locked it down and they said, no more. You have to use only our Cisco MCS servers, Media Convergence Servers, which are essentially servers sold by us, sold by Cisco, uh, approved to run the Cisco Call Manager software. If you try to install it on anything else, it would give you an error saying this is not supported hardware. And I'll tell you, 
idea people threw their hands in the air. Conspiracy. Cisco just wants to sell more stuff and all that. And while that may, may be true, uh, think of it from Cisco's perspective. People are calling in for call manager support or call managers running on a laptop with bad memory. I mean, Cisco can't guarantee that. So by buying a Cisco MCS server, you end up with full end support, meaning Cisco TAC is going to support you from soup to nuts on this product. Now, because of the hands being thrown in the air, Cisco finally said, well, you know what? The MCS servers are not really our servers. They are rebranded HP or IBM servers that we use uh, with our logo on it. And we just put our logo on it to say that we will support this hardware. But you know what? If you want to go out and buy the server, you'll probably get it a little cheaper. Uh, but it, you can buy that. We will publish the model numbers of the IBM and HP servers that we support. But do know that now you are responsible for supporting the hardware. That statement alone is probably enough to make most large organizations go, eh, I think I'll buy the Cisco version. So I know, you know, from end to end, this thing is supported. Now, since Cisco call manager or CUCM has taken hold, virtualization has gone crazy as in almost every organization uses virtualization in some form, whether it be Microsoft Hyper-V or VMware uh, ESX uh, as a virtualization platform. So Cisco added virtualization support to uh, their call manager product. Now, there are very strict guidelines, as in you have to use VMware. This is not a Hyper-V uh, based system. Uh, also, there's very strict guidelines on what kind of processor, how much memory. I mean, they, they, they outline this. But one of the great things, I mean, you can go grab an article on Cisco's website. One of the great things about uh, using this virtualization is it allows you and I to run call manager in a lab environment. Cisco has a uh, kind of base level level, if you will, license on every call manager installation so that you and I could install call manager inside of VMware workstation or download VMware server or ESX server for free. VMware offers those products for free, not the workstation, but, but that allows you to boot call manager in a lab environment. So perhaps the best analogy of what call manager is, is the conductor of a symphony. You know, the guy who looks really good standing up there with his white wand, he points at people and stuff happens. Call manager sits there at the hub of everything, telling a phone to ring, transferring the call to voicemail, directing the calls that are going in and out of voice gateways. It's the conductor of your voice system and the hub that Cisco has designed everything around. Well, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.